Matt, thank you very much. This morning on our special series, Relationships on the Brink, two big issues that many couples face, lack of trust and fear. Amy Marin and Bob Rugil have been together for nearly eight years, and they oh, know all about those issues. They shared their story in their own words. We met at a party. No, we met at a bar. Oh, at well, a bar. It was a bar restaurant. It was a bar restaurant. <laughs> there was a spark right away. There was a few complications. I was married. <laughs> was and married. that was a, a major complication. There was that thing in the back of your mind saying, what are you doing? You know better than this. And something sort of continued. After Bob got divorced, he said, I, I want to be in a relationship with you. Was he really ready? Was he going to do that again? That was my fear, and I still have that fear a little bit. I, the trust you know, issue is always kind of there. I saw all the pain and suffering around that whole infidelity issue. And for me, I realized I'm never going to make that mistake again. I always feel like things aren't, aren't going to last. And so I try to sabotage them, and meaning like, try to make it bad or say this isn't working out so well you know maybe we should just stop this now get out while the getting's good that's part that's always kind of scared me a little bit it's made me kind of keep my heartstrings a little closer to the chest because i don't want he knows i leave you know i don't want her to one day just wake up and say mm, you know kind of ready to move on and that's part of my sabotage so i don't get hurt i'll leave or i think there's something better you know the grass is always greener it's like a cyclical thing. You just got to feel that, that low point. And I, I know she'll be back up there because I know our relationship is so strong on so many different levels that she can go out there and look for another person, but I know <laughs> she's not going to find somebody that's a better match for her than me. Well, let's get some perspective. M. Gary Newman is a psychotherapist and creator of the DVD program, Newman Method, Creating Your Best Marriage. Good morning to you. Hi. We just saw Bob and Amy's story specific to them, but there are these common denominators when you've got a relationship on the brink, lack of trust and fear. Sure, and what we always have to remember is we always have to nurture the emotional end of the relationship. In my study, even cheating men, only 7% of them said it was about the sex. 48% it was about the emotional connectedness. So everybody has to remember if we nurture that emotional connection, that's the best protection and that ultimately builds trust and protects our love. We talked uh, about Amy and she's a product of divorce. She herself <clears throat> was divorced. Is it tougher when you have that in your past to go forward with a relationship? Yeah, she reminds us that childhood counts. You know, what happens to us as kids, we have to keep that in mind, not to get stuck there, but to empower ourselves to be able to make healthy adult decisions. If I can understand that I'm mixing my past and my present, sometimes I can have that conscious awareness. I don't want to sabotage this relationship. I want to keep it real and keep it present. In your practice, I'm sure you don't judge when couples come to you but are there kind of telltale signs or red flags that you see when you go, whoa, this is a relationship that's having more than growing pains, it's on the brink? Sure. It's when, first of all, when people are angry a lot, if you assess yourself and you say primarily I'm angry a lot, that's a problem. But here's a little, a little tip. If you feel you're disconnected, too many people make such a mistake. They say, oh, well, the kids are small, we're making a living, we're, you know, five years, ten years from now, we'll have time for the marriage. It's an ingredient for disaster. We always have to keep making time and energy for the relationship today in the present. You can't wait. And it's something you kind of have to renew daily, don't you? Yeah, it's that focus. If you want to be great at anything, Savannah, right, you're going to say it's going to take me work and energy and, and have that mental space. Got to do that even for your marriage, always. Well, let's do some tips because we want to give people yes. some takeaways here. Your first one is <clears throat> spend uninterrupted time talking and you've got some no-nos about subject areas oh my goodness well first of all uninterrupted time means no cell phone I, you could people get afraid if you say turn off your phone I had a woman recently tell me she walked into a lingerie shop and she said could you please get me something that my husband's really gonna be interested in me you have anything that makes me look like his iPhone oh, you know oh that's God. what it's come to yeah don't talk about work money and kids because that's what everybody's always talking about the business of life and it doesn't make us happier go do new fun things 
things together. Okay, your second tip, show appreciation for each other. This seems simple, but people forget. People forget they don't do it. And people say, you know, oh, they're a good provider, they're a good parent. Why should I appreciate them? That's what they're supposed to do. Come on, we get married because we want someone to sum us up as good. That simple, I love you and I care about you and a hug, they go a very long way. They make a big difference. And you just mentioned it a little bit. Have fun. So yeah. Date night every week if you can? Date night at least once a week, right? Because you got to keep that humming and keep that new fun going. All right. I'm Gary Newman. Always great to get your insights. Thank, Thank you. you.